In this series of lessons, and I must tell you that I was a little, I, I, you know, I didn't know whether I should teach them or not. I don't want to tread on ground that's too holy. And I don't want to discuss a subject that should not be discussed. And, and uh, in, in dealing with the third person of the, of, of the Holy Trinity, and I had never heard I, I, these lessons that we're giving to you, I have never heard anyone go into them as we are during these studies. And, and so I, I come into them very humble. And I don't come in them, into these studies uh, trying to tell you that I know more about the person of the Holy Spirit than someone else. I only say that I want to learn something and that we're all learners together. As I've often told you that doctors are practicing physicians. And of course, the only ones they can practice on is you. <laughs> and that preachers are practicing preachers. And the only one they can practice on is you. So we're practicing on you. Are you still here? Well, it's a good practice. Glory be to God. Now, we, we are, are going to do something very interesting here. On, on page 18, we're going to study that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. We are trying to lay down a basis of knowledge here. In our first lessons, we gave you the person of the Holy Spirit, that He was a person, He is a person, He will always be a person. And then we began analyzing that personality. And that is what we have, have been doing. And now we are going to go into it that this personality came and proceeded from the Father and from the Son. And before getting into that, we have been dealing with analyzing on a canvas what kind of a face this Holy Spirit would have. And on page 16, number 13, we will complete a little of this before we get into the other. The Holy Spirit uh, has a face of love. This is on page 16. Uh, a face of love. The Holy Spirit is a friend. And Paul knew Holy Spirit love. Uh, look in Romans 15 and 30. I beseech you, my brethren, for, in, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit. Now, I'd underline that little phrase right there if I were you because it, it was kind of new to me. The love of the Spirit. And so, when, when we discuss His strength and His power and His majesty, and then we got down to His humility, that's all very exciting, but there's also love in that countenance. And the Bible says it, you know. When the Bible says it, you can accept it just, just like that. And for the love of the Spirit, He does have love. And, and He will show that love. In Romans 14, 17, it says, The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but the kingdom of God is righteousness, it is peace, and it is joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, now sometimes we, we announce what the kingdom is, but we don't use those last four words, in the Holy Ghost. And so, we do have, now, now this, uh, Romans 14, 17, is your born-again experience. It is the birth of your spirit within your in, in your personality, because you see, a sinner is dead in his spirit. In Adam, that spirit died, and it only comes back alive in Christ. And otherwise, you are only two. You are a soul, and you're a body. But in Christ, you become alive, and then you are a spirit, a living spirit, soul and body. You say, how do you know that? Because uh, in Luke 15, Jesus said the prodigal son, while he was away from the father, was dead. You see? Well, his body wasn't dead. It was in the pig pen. And his soul wasn't dead. He had a mind to think. He had emotions to feel. He had a will to do. And so his soul was not dead. So what was dead? His spirit. Now, his spirit was his relationship with the father. That's what your spirit is. Your spirit is your relationship with God. It is your born-again nature. And the Lord showed me at 2 o'clock in the morning one morning that your spirit is found in Romans 14, 17, that it is God's righteousness, which is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that cleanses us from our sin. And then you receive heaven's peace. The world does not have peace, but believers do. We have peace. And you find a person that doesn't have peace, he's not a believer. Because believers have peace. Believers are not troubled people. Believers are people that are tranquil. You got it? Yeah, we got it, got it. <laughs> Poor English and good words. Anyway, and it's also joy. Joy 
which is happiness, but it's in, in the Holy Ghost. So, so the Holy Spirit does love us. He brings us our salvation and he brings us our joy. We, we see his love in teaching and guiding. In John 14, 26, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father of sin in my name, and we're going to be telling you more about that in our next lesson. Uh, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so we see his love because he is teaching and guiding. Now, uh, those are two effective parts of a, of a person. Uh, and, and they're beautiful parts. They teach and they guide. That's what a mother is. That's what a father is. A mother teaches the child and guides the child all day long. All day long. In school, the, the teacher, the teacher is teaching and guiding the pupil all during this, all during the classes. And so we see and understand the love of the Holy Spirit toward us in that he teaches us and he guides us into Christ and into, into God. All right. Now you turn your page there and number 14, the Holy Spirit is also a director of our ways. So we see him with the face of a, of a director. In Acts 8 and 26, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem, and uh, down from Jerusalem and Gaza, which is desert. And so here we find, through this, this person, the angel of the Lord, we find Philip directed directed by it. And then you find just a few verses later that the Spirit picked him up and took him to another place without him having to walk on the ground or ride in a cart. And he says he wasn't found, but they found him over at Zelotus, that God had moved him and placed him over there. So the Holy Spirit can move us and direct us, and he has a face of a person who directs others. You can call it a teacher's face if you wish or whatever. And number 15 says in Romans 8 and 26, the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. How many are glad for that? <laughs> yeah, we have infirmities. And you know, you can have a problem and you say, what in the world am I going to do with it? And it begins to dissolve on the inside, just dissolve away. The Spirit helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit, and this word itself in the original is not itself at all. Uh, you, you, and maybe in some of your Bibles, uh, it, it doesn't say itself. Uh, anybody got a, a Bible that says different from itself? If that's, you don't have your Bibles open, you have your, you have your syllabus open. Uh, I didn't look at it, but in the original, it does not say itself. It says himself because right before it is Spirit with a capital S. It is himself. He maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, now that, that is a propensity of the Spirit that is difficult for you and to me to fathom. In that he makes intercession for us. He's teaching us how to pray. He's teaching us how to intercede. He's teaching us how to reach out to God. And he, he, he makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now, now that is a little beyond what I'm able and capable of teaching you, you say. I, I wouldn't know how to explain to you how he can intercede for you with an intercession and groanings which cannot even be uttered. They're, be, they're, beyond, they're beyond the framing of words. In verse 27, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Now, you'd like to park there for quite a while. That there are those searching their hearts, who knows the mind of the Spirit. God wants us to know the mind of the Spirit. Can you say amen? amen? All right. Because he does make intercession for the saints. <laughs> Glory be to God. Not for the devil's bunch at all. For the saints, and notice his connection here that we're going to be studying presently. According to the will of God. He knows what God wants in your life, and He is making intercession for you according to the will of God the Father and God the Son. The Holy Spirit guarantees spiritual rights. 2 Corinthians 1.22 Who hath also sealed us and given to us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. He guarantees spiritual rights. You're supposed to have gifts you're supposed to have the fruit of the Spirit. You're supposed to have anointings. And you've got someone who is going to see to it that you get it. Hey, that's a helper, isn't it? That you're, going, you're not going to get shortchanged. 
that you're not going to be put back, that who hath also seared us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. And so he's today given us the beginnings of what we're going to enjoy forever in heaven. He's given us the start of it, and you and I are going to enter into it more and more as we move. What does the Holy Spirit look like? The Holy Spirit bears the face of one who feels. He bears the face of one who thinks. He bears the face of one who teaches. He bears the face of one who comforts. And you and I should come to know the beautiful Holy Spirit in a greater manner than we ever have before. Now on page 18, what we're teaching is that the Holy Spirit is a person. And the purpose of our studies as we work together in this is to reveal the person of the Holy Spirit as a member of the Godhead. Now, <laughs> I, I, I want to say again, that's a big order. Uh, it's a big order. And we're going to have to do it together. And the questions that you have re related to this, you may send them in and we'll, we'll use a part of a session to answer your questions if they are related to this. If this doesn't come clear to you, I've, ta I've taught in vain. Anything that we teach and you don't quite understand it, I'm a poor teacher. Are you here? I'm not blaming you. I didn't make it clear enough. And we mean to make it clear enough. And so as we go along, it's something you don't understand. Write it down. And we will have a time when we can say this is what we mean and this is what we believe the Word teaches. In Isaiah uh, chapter 48 and verse 16, the Word says, Come ye near unto me and hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and His Spirit has sent me. The Lord God and His Spirit has sent me. Verse 17, Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit which leadeth thee by the way thou shouldest go. So here we have a function of the Lord God functioning, working through His Spirit. And that's what we want to learn. The relationship of the Holy Ghost with the Father and with the Son and proceeding to us in this dispensation from the Father and from the Son. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, is called God. And we're going to accept the Bible for exactly what it says with no compromises. Believe in it as it says. If our intelligence can't quite stay up with it, our faith will get out in front and lope along. Say so we're going to take it, we're going to receive it until we come into a knowledge that we can comprehend and understand. All right. Dealing with verse 1, I mean with number 1, the Holy Spirit called God. Peter spoke of the Holy Spirit as a person. In Acts 11 and 7, And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was done three times, and all were drawn up into the heavens. And behold, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was sent from Cornelius unto me. And the Spirit and the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And so the Spirit is called God. Not only in, in, you know, in one place, but in many instances. For example, John 4, 24, God is a Spirit. And they that worship Him must worship Him in Spirit and in truth. And so we are dealing with the Holy Spirit as God. And point number three, page 19, the Holy Spirit proceeds, comes to us in the Bible and in our, in our personal prayer lives and in our thinking re regarding deity. He comes to us proceeding, coming to us from the Father and the Son. First John 5 and 7. It says now, there are three that bear record in heaven. And they are the Father, and they are the Word, and they are the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. 
And they are the spirit, and they are the water, and they are the blood. And these three agree in one. Now, 1 John 5 and 7 has been misunderstood in that they said, well, now, wait a minute. There are three that bear record in heaven, but they are one. And they seek to identify, identify only God the Father, and that Jesus was God the Father on this earth, and that the Holy Ghost that was sent is also God the Father, and that the three are one. Now, there are more ways in being one than, than there are in being meshed together. As I've made the illustration to you, if I had a car for sale for $1,000, and you came to my house and said, I want to buy this car, how much do you want for it? And my wife came to the door, and she said, well, we want $1,000 for the car. And you went away and says, I'll think about it. You came back again. And when you came back again, you said, I'd like to buy that car. How much is it? And my son was there. He says, well, we want $1,000 for it. And you said, well, I'll come back. And you come back again. And then this time when you ring the doorbell, I answer the door. And that you have a car for sale? Uh, yes. Uh, how much you want for it? We want $1,000 for it. Now, we three are one, but we still have three brains. We, 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 we still have three persons, you see. But we're still one. We're one in action. Now, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost have one action, and that is to bring you to heaven, that you might enjoy, that you might enjoy heaven forever. And God so loved the world, one person, that he gave his only begotten son, the second person. And the second person said, I will send you another comforter, the Spirit, and he will abide with you. And so you have three uh, persons. But their mission is one. Their, their operation is one. They're not running three different schools of thought. And they're not all going three different ways. They're going one way and they're going together. Now there is more ways of being oneness than there is in a thing being clamped together. And the way that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one is that they are one in blessing, one in anointing, and they are one in purpose of what they're going to do on the face of this earth. When the Lord Jesus was baptized in Jordan, he was standing down in the water, one person. And there was a voice from heaven saying, this is my son, two persons. And the Holy Spirit lighted upon his head, third person. Now they were one, all right. They were one in that God was pleased, Christ was pleased, the Holy Ghost was pleased, and they were moving for the salvation of the world, for the blessing of the world. You can have three men running a company. They will be three distinct persons, but when you talk to them, they're all running that same company. And so I, I want us to get it plain in, in my spirit please, uh, that there is a difference between Father God and the Son of God. And there is a further difference between the Son of God and the Holy Ghost of God. And that there are three of these persons. The Bible says there are three, and we will accept them. Now in verse 8, the witnesses in the earth, they are the witnesses of your salvation. They are the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Now, that's the way God looks down upon them. When you look up to God, you look up to God through uh, blood, water, and spirit. That way. You first have the blood of salvation, the waters of baptism, and, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But when God looks down, he sees spirit, top, water, next, and blood, last. Because he is looking down the other way. And so he, he sees there spirit, water, and blood, as it is in in verse 8. In man's salvation, even in the Old Testament, uh, even in the tabernacle, when you walked into the tabernacle, there were three witnesses to God. There was first the blood at the doorpost. And if you didn't have the blood, if you didn't have the blood uh, on the altar, then there could be no sacrifice, there could be no coming to God. And the next was the water in the great lava, a bowl. And if you didn't wash, you died. The, the priest had to wash. 
In the third department was the Holy of Holies and the Shekinah glory where God spoke to man by his spirit in the Holy of Holies. So you have spirit and you have water and you have blood. So it says there are three witnesses to God in there, not four and not two. And yet there are many people that do not have these three witnesses in their lives. And you should have. You should know your sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus. You should be baptized in water because Jesus was, and you're not better than Jesus. And if you haven't been baptized, we're ready to baptize you. Well, you in Seattle, Washington, we'll wait a little on that. Yeah. There are three that bear, that bear witness in the earth, and those three witness in our salvation. Peter on the day of Pentecost spoke to all those people. They were all religious. They were all in Jerusalem to worship. He says, repent, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost. Three. There can be nothing but three. And there can be nothing but three in heaven. As these are three, then that is three. The Bible says so. 1 John 5 and 7 and verse 8. All right. Number four. Christ was indwelt by the Spirit without measure. Now, yes, the Holy Spirit does proceed from the Father and from the Son. Then in number four, we say Christ was indwelt when he was upon this earth by the Holy Ghost and without measure. And John 3 and 34, for he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth him not the Spirit by measure unto him. So he is the only person ever to be on the face of this earth that had this Holy Spirit, this Holy Ghost, without any measure. It could not be measured. There was no way to measure. You and I have a measure, a part, and a portion. He had it without measure. Now, it identifies three there, whom God, that's number one, speaking the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit unto him, speaking of the Lord Jesus. By measure. So you have the three. In John 15 and 26, when the comfort is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, I will send from the Father. Even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. So you have, you have him proceeding from the Father and from the Son. From whence cometh this Spirit? He cometh from the Father and from the Son. The, the Lord Jesus on the face of this earth, uh, wearing a human body, had this Holy Spirit with him without measure. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was brought to birth by the Holy Spirit. He was guided and led by the Holy Spirit. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brought him back from the dead. And so they had a, a strong relationship. And you say, well, I don't understand that. When you get to heaven, you will. How many can wait a little while on that? Yes, sir. Number five, the Holy Spirit proceeds from Elohim and works with the Godhead in creation. Genesis 1 and 2, the earth was without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So the Holy Spirit proceeds from Elohim and works with the Godhead even in creation. I hope we can come back to that just a little later, I, I think we will, and, and uh, speak more about that, that the Spirit of God moved with him in creation. The witness of the Holy Spirit at, at Jesus' baptism, I just gave you that. It's in Matthew 3 and, and, and 16, how the heavens were open and you had the three identifying together in that they are flowing together. The Holy Spirit, number seven, testifies of Christ in John 15, 26, the, when the comfort has come, uh, which I will send unto you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, he proceeds from the Father, he shall testify me. So again, the functioning together of the three, the, the, the working, the working together of them. My goodness, these lessons get longer. <laughs> You're number eight, the Holy Spirit working with the Son. Now he was sent from the Son, John 16, 7, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. I cannot send him unto you. I, it's impossible to send him unto you unless I go away. You cannot have the two of them manifested at the same time. I think I, I, I told you 
uh, very, uh, very clearly uh, that that the that there's really only three dispensations. You break them down into seven, but three, and that's the dispensation of the Father, all the Old Testament, the dispensation of the Son, which is the Gospels, and the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, which is Acts, the Epistles, and the Revelation. And, and, and there are only just three dispensations, and they're divided between between the Trinity.